come this year because uh, we're still a little afraid of the Bengals, but uh, we're going to get over it. Um, today, you know, I guess Wallace wants me to talk about initially what we look for, um, you know, what kind of stuff is we're breaking down an offensive line, tips or whatever. Uh, I'm going to be real brief on this because, uh, quite honestly, if we're going to go over some technique stuff, uh, I'd like to go over that in some detail. So we'll go ahead and just give you a couple of uh, shots on that. Uh, the first thing, obviously, when somebody said, well, how about, uh, you know, personnel? Well, you know, what do you look for in an offensive lineman? If I was going out and I was at a college and I was trying to recruit an offensive lineman or something like that, generally, here's, here's the way I would do it. It's real technical. You take the guy that's kicking the shit out of the other guy, and you've probably got a good one. Um, but if you go uh, realistically, on the level I'm at now, it's a size speed league, okay? So generally, you know, you don't go, there are some exceptions. Like we have a guy, Kelly Gregg, that uh, plays nose tackle for us. So he's like six foot tall and he weighs 310 pounds or something. Short arms, all that kind of stuff. He wouldn't pass the look test at most high schools, okay? So, you know, there are some exceptions, but you don't go chase the exceptions. You're trying to get things, uh, you know, uh, the height, you know, and size and all that kind of stuff. And it's a trickle-down effect. It's the same game. That's a, the beauty of it. So when you're looking out here, I see college coaches, pro coaches, and I see high school coaches out here. It's the same game. It's just we get paid a little more than, than some of the high school coaches, okay? Unless you're at Texas or something like that. But um, really, you want those big guys, but you just don't want a slug. You know, you want guys, when we're watching, we're looking at tape, we're always looking at who can move, who can, you know, can they bend at their, their uh, ankles, can they bend at their knees, can they bend at their waist. You get those big slug guys look real pretty when you get them off the bus, but if they're always bending at the waist and can't bend their knees or can't bend at the ankles, that's usually the guy that we try to attack, okay? Um, obviously, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to, you know, do your techniques, all that kind of stuff, because quite honestly, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of great coaches out here who do a hell of a lot better job of that than I would. Um, some tips that we'd look for. You know, splits. Be, make sure you're looking at your splits. Uh, you know, if every time you run a power scheme and your guys are together, all right, and your guard is off the ball, it's a no-brainer for a defensive coach. You've got to give a defensive coach some credit. Okay, we try to give you guys some credit, not much, but we try to give offensive line guys and all, all that credit as well. You're looking at the same thing we're looking at, okay? Um, so you try not to be so obvious. And it is funny because even in the NFL, we played a team that every time the tight end was in a left-handed stance, it was a run. Every time he was in a right-handed stance, it was a pass. So you tell me, if that happens on the NFL level, it may happen wherever you know, you're coaching as well. Um, other things, how much weight do they have on their hand? You know, are they, is there a real tip? You gotta look for everything. What we're looking for is everything, okay? So you'll even have, even if it's the offhand, maybe in an offhand, if it's a run, he may have his hand, you know, his, his fist like that in a run. If it's a pass, maybe he's got it a little higher up on his hip or whatever. We look for anything like that, just, and I know you guys are looking for tips on the defensive line as well, okay? It's the same thing, but we look for all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, how much weight he has on his, on his, you know, front hand and all that kind of stuff. So little basic things like that. I'm going to give you some tips reverse that you can look for as a, uh, as um, some indicators for you uh, real quick on defensive line, all right? Generally... If you have a defensive tackle and he's in a wide shade, he's in a wide alignment, okay, you can expect him to, do, to be what kind of player? Well, you can probably expect him to be a penetrating player. In other words, he's going to be rolling off that football. He's not going to be much on technique, okay, as far as uh, holding jump throughs or, uh, you know, things like that. He's going to just roll off the football, okay? The other thing is, well, what's the difference if he's tighter? You know, maybe he's got the exact same stance, but he's tighter. If he's tighter on a pass rush, what can you anticipate from him? Well, you can probably anticipate him giving you a little wiggle, okay? More of a little wiggle. He can take inside uh, rips on you. 
He can try to freeze your feet. That's what he's doing over there. If he's wider, you're going to get a hell of a lot less of that. Okay? You're going to get a hell of a lot less of that. And it's just a, a thing that maybe is so obvious that maybe you kind of miss it sometimes. Okay? Um, we're always looking at what kind of set, you know, what kind of setter are we going against? All right, Paul's got some huge 400-pound guy that plays guard. Well, he's going to take him right on a line of scrimmage and all that kind of stuff. He's not going to sit back. He's going to try to take you from the line of scrimmage. So you've got to be aware of that, and they're going to study your tape. You know, that's a guy that you've, you've got to get rid of his hands before you rush the pass. You can't let him get his hands on you, okay, obviously. Um, but little things like that as you're going on can help you. What kind of game are you, you, more, you know, more likely going to get? If you've got a wide three technique, you're going to get a tackle in twist. It's probably the most obvious stunt you have, right? If he's in there tighter and he steps inside, now what game are you get? You're going to get the end, right? Okay, you get the end underneath and the tackle behind. You'd be surprised how, when you watch the tape, at least I am, uh, how many times people are, are giving, that shit, they're giving that stuff away, okay? And it could be like this. I see it all the time on college tapes and on our tape too, I'm sure. Um, some guys will, a defensive end, every time a guy's trying to make a move, they're always going to try to make it off the outside foot, okay? So if, if he has this, you know, maybe he's got his left hand down, okay? On his games, as you're watching his games, every one of them will be, if he's coming back to the inside, will be with his outside uh, foot planted and going back inside. Sometimes they'll telegraph it, won't they? Okay, how about if a guy's off the ball a little bit? It's the same thing we look for you guys. You should look for the defensive line. If a guy's crowding the football, all right, he's probably going to be a penetrating guy, isn't he? It makes sense. If he's off the ball, he's going to be less penetrating, okay? But he may be in a position where he can try to work back underneath you and things like that, okay? Um, but just, you know, little tips like that, I, I think you'll see. Um, when we get going to the pass rush games, We'll go into to that in a, a little more detail on uh, how we attack your protection, okay? Because we're always trying to protect. Uh, we'll, we'll run our stunts into the man protection side, which is obvious, okay? How do you guys telegraph which side is the man protection side, okay? A lot of times it's as simple as seeing your backfield set, okay? If you've got a back that's offset over here to the right, the quarterback's inside, then there's a lot of teams that everything will be the man protection side will be here, okay? Everything else, it'll be the slide side, what we call it, where the center guard and tackle are involved in the protection here. The man protection side, it's the guard tackle and back, okay? If, uh, if that's all you do, then that gives a defensive coach a lot of ammo. Every game, again, is on the man protection side, okay? So no matter what pass rush stunts you have on, we're going to attack that side ideally. Okay, so you want to you want to change that up. Okay, there's a lot of teams now that'll scan backs and they'll do different things, which makes it a lot more uh, more difficult. There's also things that we'll we'll look for just so you know that we're not uh, just solely basing it on that. Some guys, if there's a dominant lineman, okay, we have a, a real good defensive tackle named Trevor Price, who a uh, big tall guy, he can really rush the passer. Well, a lot of times teams will will bring their center regardless of the backfield set, over to Trevor. So that's something we look for as well. Teams are going to study you. If you're in high school, you have one dominant defense alignment probably, and you're fortunate to have that. We only have one dominant, well, we got two dominant inside guys. But if you're fortunate enough to have, uh, you know, one, watch their protection. You know, I mean, we're not as dumb as, as some of you guys think. We know where you're going to bring that center to, to favor, you know, against that side. Okay, but just so you're aware of it, defensive coaches are looking for that. Okay? Even though you might not show it the week before, we're going to see the adjustment right away. Okay? So just so you're aware that changing up your protections is not a, not a bad thing to do. Okay? That there are some obvious signs that we look for. Okay? Because uh, the first thing we want to know is, no matter who we're playing, is what's their protection? Okay? Uh, we call it the exact same way you guys do. You know, we'll call it scat, we'll call it jet, we'll, you, know, you guys may call it option protection or whatever. But we're going to know those protections as defensive coaches as well as you do. 
okay? And so just understand that. We'll, we'll be able to tell how you're reading uh, certain guys. Are you counting? You know, if you're counting, who do you count? Are you, are you letting your backs pick up the, uh, the uh, safeties and the secondary guys? So uh, that's what defensive coaches look for, all right? What I'm going to do is talk to you about um, just how we try to defeat blocks. We're a little different, I think, than a lot of teams. And if there's some guys that are coaching D-line here as well, uh, maybe this will help you out. And again, I don't know if it works or not. Okay, we've been fortunate. Uh, I think the record in the NFL um, for a team uh, holding runners to less than 100 yards, <clears throat> I believe, is, uh, was the old Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, back when my father was the coach there. And then um, the record he broke was the Chicago Bears. And I think he was part of that defense back as a defensive coordinator. We went 50 straight games in Baltimore without giving up a 100-yard rusher until the Bengals were racked up like 124 or something like that, okay, against us. That broke our string. But um, so these techniques actually work a little bit. Last year, we, we couldn't stop a nosebleed, okay. We were six in the NFL on defense, which was way below our standards, okay. Um, but we did finish, I think, number one in the league in stopping a run as far as, I think we gave up 2.7 or 2.6 a carry. All right, so these techniques I'm going to give you work a little bit. Um, I'm not going to guarantee you getting to the passer and all that stuff. I'm just going to show you how we play the run, okay? I'm going to ask for volunteers so I think you guys can see. Um, I'll give you the, the way most people attack you, and I'll give you the way we play the run. Uh, sometimes a little different. First of all, um, Again, we're looking for all those signs. You know, we're looking for uh, how much you know, weight. We talked about that, what the splits are, and all that kind of stuff. If you play the Bengals, you can look at them. They got a 400-pound right guard, a 400-pound right tackle. All right, so it's pretty obvious they're going to run the ball there, okay? Um, especially if they get close, you better be ready to play the double team, okay? The difference between... You know, playing the double team, playing the reach, and all that kind of stuff. You got to make, you know, football is an easy game made complicated by coaches. All right? So we got to teach, and again, I'm just going to teach you exactly how we teach our guys. We got to teach things where our guys can be aggressive. You don't want to overload them, okay? Uh, because you're, generally guys aren't real smart to play this game anyway, right? But we're going to be aggressive, and that's what we have to be. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is talk to you about playing a, uh, a reach block, okay, or playing a shade. Generally, when you play a shade on defense, so you're playing this spot over here, this three technique, or you're playing this one tech, whatever you guys call these, these things, we just call them a shade, okay? Anytime I'm playing that responsibility, I'm not playing just as an A-gap player if I'm the nose there, or I'm not just playing a B-gap if I'm... The three technique, okay? What I'm doing is, number one, I can't get reached. That's the first thing you tell a guy when uh, he's lined up in a, in a shade, don't you? You can't get reached, okay? The next part of the equation is don't allow a jump through. And what that means, that doesn't mean you're going to tackle the guy when flow goes away from you. That basically means that I've got to stay flat to the line of scrimmage when, when the uh, flow goes away, okay? So I'm going to show... Um, the traditional way of, of playing a reach block, and then I'm going to show you uh, our way. Okay, I don't have a pointer, but anyway, if you get, you got one, Wiles? If, uh, if I'm playing a three technique or I'm playing this B gap over here, if, if all you told this guy to do was to, um, he can't get reached, okay, he can't get reached, where do you think his alignment's going to be? It's going to be wide as shit, isn't it? Well, hell, it's not my fault. I, I'm not getting reached. Okay, he's out there wide, and he's rolling off the football, and I did my job, and the, and the ball's going to be run up your ass, you know, uh, in somebody else's gap, okay? The second part of that equation is he can't allow a jump through. And so if, if he, and I was saying flow goes away means the jump through, okay? Uh, scoop, I guess you guys call it. All right, if you just said don't allow the scoop, where's he going to line up? He's going to be tight as he can be, right? So what you're doing is, you know, there's people say, well, do you split the difference? I don't know. What it is for us is an ability alignment. What ability? To where I don't get reached, 
to where I don't allow the jump through or I, or I uh, don't allow the scoop. Okay? Uh, again, are we worried as the Baltimore Ravens of rushing the passer as much as we're worried about playing the run on early downs? Okay? We're going to stop the run on early downs. That, that's going to be our main focus. We'll convert on the pass rush. Again, in today's game, everybody says, well, they throw the ball all over the place. Well, trust me, if, if you're just getting up the field all the time, they're going to run the ball all over you, and you won't have to worry about rushing the passer. Okay, so I think you have to be able to stop the run uh, first. Okay, so if I just said, I'm going to show you the, the, the way we're playing a reach block first, okay? These are rules, by the way. Don't get reached. Don't allow a jump through. That's it. That's your rules. Okay, now, if you can do those two things, you can probably be a pretty decent run defender. All right? Everything else is a reactionary block. Everything else is a reactionary block to us. Okay? So you've got two rules. Don't get reached. Don't allow a jump through. All right? Now, let me go over how to play this reach block and the common way to play it and then the way we play it. Okay? So, uh, coaches, can I just bring you up here real quick, you two? Ooh, that's a big rascal. Never mind. You sit down. No, I'm just going to come on up here. And... Uh, I'm going to show you the common way of playing things. Maybe uh, you've heard, you know, like the guys that like to narrow their feet up and just get screaming up the field. Trust me, those old line coaches love to see that. All right, the way we're going to play, it's a little different. So, Coach, I'm going to show it two different ways so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. All right, let's put Coach over here as the guard. I'll be the defensive player, and Coach, if you can be the tackle or whatever, even though you're not involved in this first one, okay? But that, that's all right. We're going to play the reach block, all right? The first thing, if all I'm doing is, is screaming off the ball, I can play the reach, can't I? Okay, there's no question I can play the reach block. But I'm going to show you a couple things here of you think you can play the reach block, but maybe uh, why it's maybe a little better to play it the way, the, uh, uh, do it the way we do it. All right, so if coach is coming off and he's going to reach me, the ball's going this direction. All right, and I'm just going to get skinny up the field and all that kind of jazz. All right, and we'll just kind of walk through, set, hit, boom and I'm up the field, and I'm able to handle this gap, aren't I? Okay, coach, show them what you're going to do if I just go screaming up the field like that. Set, hit. Okay, and he's already done what to me? He's widened me, right? Okay, he's widened me. If, I'm, if I get this arm and I'm screaming up the field like this, go ahead, coach, and I'm screaming up the field, how much help can I be underneath me or inside of me? None. Okay, the way we play is... We're going to play, our primary gap is that B gap, but we're also going to be able to fall back inside and play and be able to assist on, on things inside of me, okay? If all I'm doing is penetrating, the first thing as a position coach you talk about is the head placement, right? Get that head up the field. You've got to have that head outside, okay? That's great. The other part of it, the way we talk about it is where our hips are, okay? If my hips are outside, I'm already in position, to where I can make a tackle, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do that, if, if, and I'm going to be able to fall back inside, okay? So the first way, I can't do anything back inside if all I'm doing is, is ripping up the field. I can't help. The only thing I can do now is if I'm up the field is escape back underneath, right, with a spin. That's all I can do, okay? Now, watch the difference. See what's more, you know, see if I have a little better control if I play it this way. Okay, set, hit. Okay, now I'm right here. You see the position? Can I make this tackle right here? Okay, if my hips are outside. I think I can make that play. Okay? Can I also help inside? I, I, I think I can. I'm going to show you the technique that we use. Okay, first of all, if I just go to make a tackle, and, and I'm on coach here, and I just go to make a tackle, the first thing I have to do is clear my hips. Is that not true? Well, if I'm playing B-gap, my hips are already clear. Doesn't that make sense? Okay, so he's coming right at me. My hips are outside. You know, am I trying to get knock him back and try to knock that guard back about five yards? Absolutely. Okay, absolutely I am. But if, if I can't, everything's equal, there's no difference in, in guys, then my technique, my hips need to be outside. Okay? What's going to happen when the ball declares inside of me is another big difference. Okay? If coach is coming here and ball declares inside of me, 
Now it declares inside, if all I was doing was getting up the field, I can't do anything but spin. Okay, now I'm in here. Okay, if he keeps blocking. I'm going to drop my, my arm, my op hand, right over his elbow. Okay, right over his elbow. So I'm punching here. I'm squeezing. I'm squeezing that thing. Primarily, my gap is right here where my hips are. I can just shut off and make the tackle, right? Same side rip, opposite side arm over elbow. Okay, so when I have to fall back, I'll go arm over elbow. Okay, so again, you'll see this technique here. You'll see it illustrated when we go to the tapes, but he's coming here. Coach is here. He can't even see it. If I go same side, I'm ripping and going to make the tackle. If it goes inside of me, I'm falling back and clearing it here. Okay, you're going to see the same thing because everybody teaches it. There's no such thing as holding, so I don't even want to hear about it. Okay, as a defense coach, it's no excuse. Absolutely, the rules are where they can grab you. That's not holding anymore. The only thing that's really a hold is if they get on your back numbers, right? That's where it should be called a hold. Anything else, I don't even want to hear it, okay? So by using technique and dropping my off hand over the elbow, I can clear off a block, okay? Am I going to be the primary hitter inside? No, okay? I'm, general, I'm generally the secondary hitter. Somebody's responsible for that gap inside of me, but I'm going to help them, okay? You want to play run defense, get more than one guy in a gap, okay? Try to get a guy, a guy and a half in a gap, okay? And that's how we do it. We drop over elbows, okay? Offhand over elbows. Let's take a look at the second part of that thing that I said. What was his, his first rule is he can't get reached, right? The second part of that was he's not going to allow a jump through. Again, if all we did was get straight off the football, what's generally going to happen is, I know in our game that when he comes rolling off the ball, this guy's going to end up cutting him half the time. Okay? He'll roll up on the legs and all that kind of stuff. All right? And it'll look like Miami of Ohio against Cincinnati Bearcats when we rushed for 600 yards. I had to put that dig in because I was a Bearcat. But anyway, he's coming here, right, Wiles? But anyway, uh, the ball's going this direction. This guard's flying here. He's going to roll up on us, okay? He's rolling up on us. This guy gets to the linebacker, and this guy gets cut out by this tackle, okay? That's what happens a lot of time if all I do is go shooting straight up the field. Well, how am I going to get to the Pro Bowl if I don't get any sacks? I don't know. Trevor Price had 13, okay? So I'm not sure. Generally, my thing is you stop the run, you'll get a chance to rush the pass, okay? Um, if I, the way I'm going to play it is, as soon as that guard comes here, I'm reading one man. As soon as that guard comes here, I'm squeezing the shit out of this guy. Okay? I'm going to try to take... See, here's the thing. It, remember I said it's a, it's a football is an easy game made, made complicated by uh, coaches, right? If I'm a D lineman and I'll fight the hard shoulder in the running game and the soft shoulder in the passing game, I'm probably going to be pretty successful. Okay? Well, the hard shoulder is where? Hard shoulders inside, isn't it, on that scheme? So I need to press to the inside, not the backside of the guy, okay, which is a little different than us. All right, let me show you those two techniques, what the advantage is and what the disadvantage, which I can't figure out. You let me know, okay? So if I'm playing here and I'm the shade, we're going to run it at you. Hopefully you can see it. We'll move across the stage if you can't. All right, I'm going to show you the, the way most people run it first and then I'm going to show you how we play it, okay? So this is most people get ready to catch me, all right? But as I'm rolling off the ball, so coach, you're coming here, you guys are scooping to this backer that's behind me, okay? All right, remember, that's the way most people play it. Set, hit, okay? And I'm going to fight like hell, and I'm even with this guy, right? My shoulders are even with him. Run like hell, get ready to make a tackle. How good a tackle can I make, okay? I don't know, but I'm in trouble. Can, how, can the ball go behind me? Now well, what the hell am I going to do? Okay, my shoulders aren't square to the line anymore. Has this guy blocked the linebacker? He's got a hell of a chance to, right? All right, let me show you how we play it. Okay. All right, set, hit. Okay, go ahead, coach. What's wrong? All right, I'm square to the line of scrimmage. I'm fighting the hard shoulder, which is inside. I'm not tackling him, right? I'm not tackling him at all. Okay, I am not tackling at all. So I'm just going, I'm fighting square. I was able to fight square because was, I was on your inside, wasn't I, coach? I was on his inside. 
That's why I can, can fight that, okay? What happens a lot of times is you'll see guys slingshot, which is here, he'll grab, and when he goes to pull, he'll pull and sling, okay? That's fine, okay? That's all fine and dandy. Unfortunately, now they're calling what on that? I'll call a lot of defensive holding calls on that, okay? But I'm going to fight that inside as best I can, all right? And that's my, that's my rule. Do you guys get a good idea of, of what I'm talking about there? You know, have I said anything about what hands down, um, all that kind of stuff? Nothing. Because we're going to have different abilities, right? It's easy for me to say, well, shit, you're an NFL, you're with the NFL players, okay? When I was with the Arizona Cardinals, which is close to the NFL level, okay, they had a, uh, we had a guy named Eric Swan who I couldn't get to play square, so we put him in a four-point stance. And guess how he played then? Like a bitch. All right, he was tough. So when he came in there, he, he'd uh, stay square on blocks. Okay? Uh, right hand down, left hand down, all that. I, I don't know. Okay? Because, you know, there's some guys that don't think you're going to practice right hand down, left hand down, and all that. We always prefer the inside hand down. Okay? We always prefer the inside hand down because, you know, of a few things. But the main thing is that when we go to a clinic, we don't want our film looking bad. Okay, but uh, the, real, the real thing there is some guys who don't think they can play out of a left-handed stance, then you're probably better off playing him out of right-handed stance and tightening him down a little bit, okay? He's automatically going to step with his outside foot in there, okay? So just tighten him down a little bit. And, and what did we say that alignment was? That was an ability alignment, right? So the ability was to play where I can't get reached, don't allow a jump through. Well... If you have an outside, a guy that's going to have to play with his outside hand down, just tighten him up on his shade, okay, a little bit. All right, what's the toughest block to go, uh, to defeat or to, to go against if you're a defense lineman? Double team? Double team ought to be the toughest one, right? See, how many guys play double team or defense tackle in, in college, high school, whatever? Nobody did? Everybody's a fucking quarterback, okay? All right. I appreciate that. You guys are, get ready for this then. All right, because the double team, the first time I ever played, they moved me to defensive tackle. Somebody told me I was going to be the toughest guy in Chicago, and I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I got down there, and they double teamed my ass about 30 yards. I was playing defensive tackle and free safety, okay? So I figured that wasn't a good thing. Um, kind of learned this on my own. It's funny, but if I play it similar to the way I play a reach block, haven't I already taught the technique? If you knew a double team was coming, wouldn't you attack the postman right here and have my hips play the drive man? Okay? So by already teaching that reach block, you basically taught really how to play the double team. Okay? Um, again, look where my hips are. That's the main thing. Look where my hips are. Don't necessarily worry about, well, my head's over here. And I always to love this one. My head's here. Right? Well, fight back that to this pressure into the double team. You guys keep going. And what's going to happen? They're going to knock me, knock me off the football. they got no choice. Anytime my shoulders are turned, they're going to get movement on me, period. Okay? They're going to get movement on me 100% of the time. So I'm trying to stay as square to that line of scrimmage as I possibly can. Where's the hard shoulder on these double teams? It's right here, isn't it? Isn't it this one here? So I'm attacking that one, okay, and my hips are going to play the drive man. How many guys am I looking at? I'm looking at one guy, okay, and this is no lie. When we played the Bengals, when we played the Bengals and they got those, and it's not that I'm telling anything because Paul watches our tape all the time. If we're in there and they got 800 pounds on us, okay, we will try to play it like we do the reach because most reach blocks I can split and make a tackle. Okay, most double teams. Eventually, he's going to come off and go to the backside backer, and I can now come off. What, what kind of block does it become now? It becomes a reach, doesn't it? So a lot of times, I can come off and I can make a tackle. With his guys, those two monsters they got, they're knocking you off the football. Okay, the longer that I stay on that, watch out. They're going to knock my ass out of there. So what I try to do is, worst comes to worst, I will hit my chest on the ground. Okay? 
notice I said chest, not back, okay? So if I'm in a position like this and, oh, shit, I feel it coming, I'll go ahead and hit the deck. We've played him with, you know, a 270-pound guy. Well, his ass is going to get knocked off, okay? But try to hit your chest on the ground. Don't overcoach it. Just try to hit your chest on the ground. What will happen, they'll fall over top of you a lot of times, okay? But I'm going to show you how the common way of playing um, this technique where I'm just getting straight off the football, all right? And then I'm going to show you how we play it, okay? So the first one, you guys don't launch me past that. So when I get to here, kind of hit the brakes. But I'm just going to roll off. These guys are going to come off on the double team and see how, you know, see what happens to me, okay? You guys are, here's my postman. You're the drive man, okay? All right, set, hit. All right. And now I'm in trouble, okay? You guys see what I'm saying? All right, now let's watch. Because eventually, I tell you what, this time I want you to come off. Because it's not, really you don't have too many true double teams, right, anymore. It, it's more double team and then right off, okay? to the backside backer, okay? And this guy will overplay him. Isn't that true? Okay, let's watch it. So you end up kind of reaching. He's going to help you on the double. You're going to the backside backer, and you're going to end up overtaking me, okay? This is the way commonly played. Set, hit. Hey, keep going. Okay, you see what happened? He ended up making the block, reaching me. Coach ended up going to the backside backer. All right, let's see how they play it now uh, with our techniques. Okay? Set, hit. Okay, go ahead, coach. You see what I'm saying? All right, first of all, I've tied him up. So my, my waist, or as my ass and everything else, are tying his legs up. Okay, we're trying to tie his legs up. For him to get out of there, coach, you really had to get a lot of ground, right? Okay, so we'll take a look at that one more time. Okay, we'll try to take a look at that one more time. All right, set, hit. Okay, go ahead, go. You see what I'm saying? I'm already in position to make this tackle on the double. Okay? Now, again, we said that teaching the reach and the jump through or the scoop block, those were the guy's primary uh, rules. Okay? Anything else is, uh, is going to be reactionary. Okay? So what other reactionary blocks do I get? How about a, a guy down and a guard pull? Okay? So we'll walk through that. If coach comes down, he blocks me and coach pulls. All right, you see what I'm saying? That's one that we get a bunch, right? Okay. Um, again, I'm just throwing things how we do it. You probably don't need to listen, okay? Because, I mean, again, I, uh, one thing we do know how to do is stop the run in the Ryan family, with the exception of my twin brother, okay? So but I'm going to show you some of these techniques. You really need to show him some. All right, uh, but the, what we do is, you know, do you get skinny through the hole? Do you club across it? What if you get stuck? You know, how do you play things? I've got to go over all these damn things. No, we said this is going to be a reactionary block, right? So we let our players play it. You'll have some guys that, boom, they'll get off that thing, and they'll drop, they'll get skinny through this hole, and, and they'll penetrate, Okay. And usually somebody goes, well, coach, if he's penetrating, do you want him to grab the hip of the guard and come and make the tackle? No, we don't want that. Well, hell yeah, of course, we'd love to see that. And if you get a player like that, make sure you, you get a hold of me after. Very rare that you'll find one like that, okay? But if all my guy does is penetrate, if all my guy does is drop that shoulder and he runs through there and he penetrates, how many directions can the ball carrier go now? He can only go one direction, okay? And the linebacker's going to overrun him anyway, okay? So you've taken away all his cutback runs against that blocking pattern, okay? Um, so that's one way to play it. If you knew it was coming, all right, where's the, where's the ball designed to go? If coach is, is pulling, isn't the ball designed to go out here? Okay, if it's designed to go out here and I was able to club across it, I'd go ahead and do that, wouldn't I? Okay, if I knew it was coming. How would I know it was coming? Huh? Yeah, I'd be looking at the film, and I'd see that this guard is off the ball. He's probably looking over there, and here's this big, this fat-ass tackle. Like, I'm going to kill this three-tech. All right? And he's staring down bigger Dallas. You're going to see a lot of that on film. That's how I do it, so I'm taking a peek. 
I'll see it's coming and I'll go ahead and club it. All right. So that's the only, only way I would take it. So we'll go ahead and, and I'll show the club initially as you pull, coach, and then I'm just going to club across you. Okay, set here, hit, boom, and I'll just go ahead and club it, right? It's easy to, you know, I mean, I'm just demonstrating we're not going to knock shit out of somebody. All right, now, the other way was get skinny through the hole, set, hit, okay, and I'm getting skinny through the hole. I'm just dropping my shoulder and I'm driving my feet through the hole, okay? I love to redirect and make the tackle. Not realistic a whole lot of times. But if all I do is penetrate, that's fine. Okay? What happens if you've got a guy with loft disease? You know what that is? Lack of freaking talent, right? Okay? So we've all been there. I was there myself as a player. All right? So you're sent back, and i got no, no talent. He can't get skinny through the hole. He's in too deep where he can't club. The one thing we can't have is this guy just collapsed the shit out of this line. Okay, into, into my backside pursuit. Okay, well trust me, if he doesn't do something, he's going to get his ass knocked off. Okay, and I just call it a push technique. All right, so we'll go ahead and show you what, what it looks like. I'm going to show you what happens if I get stuck and how this guy will drive me. Okay, all right, here's the way commonly played set hit. Boom, and oh boy, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm too far here. He's just going to drive me off the stage. All right, here's the way this push technique works. Okay, as he goes, and I'll just talk through it as we're going, set, hit, oh shoot, I can't get through. You see what I'm saying? I, he, I can't get skinny through the hole because I can't drop my arm underneath, okay? So his head's in front. I can't club, I'm too far here. So all he's doing, he's gonna, I mean, use his coaching against him. Go ahead and drive, go ahead and drive. You see what I'm saying? And I'm just gonna literally push him. So when he comes here, one more time, so coach, if you pull, all right, set, hit, boom, go ahead, coach. And I'm just going to pull, okay? Now I bench about 135, all right? So I'm not going to use my strength here. Uh, but all I'm going to use is technique. So if I'm caught in here, and I may literally have to reload my hand. So if I'm in here, I may have to, ah, shit, reload my hand right through his armpit. That's all I'm trying to get, and try to get him off that power track and just kind of push. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, and now that gets me from getting washed. So just push your hips back a little bit, and then I'll fall off and, and help make the tackle. Okay, that's a reactionary block. Obviously, a high high set is going to be pass, right? Okay, how do you play the draw if they uh, if they're running a uh, a draw on you? Okay, everybody says, well, retrace. No, retrace is for your ends. Okay. Retrace is for your ends. The way we're going to do, and when we see a draw, is we're going to fight, guess what shoulder now? The hard shoulder. Where's the hard shoulder? Inside. We were attacking the upfield shoulder or the soft shoulder on pass. Now all of a sudden they try to turn this guy out and boom, I'm now going to play the hard shoulder because it's a run. Okay? So squeeze. You're going to see our tackles squeeze against the draw. Okay? So they're going to try to squeeze and make that, that back have to make a decision. Okay, are we all straight on that one? Okay, so when he goes, I'm, all of a sudden I see pass. I'm not just flying up the field here and let him turn me out. Okay, as soon as I see it, I'm not retracing either. Okay, I'm just going to try to squeeze back. I'm turning back into it. Wham, and turn back into this inside. Okay, is how we'll play that. Okay, um, how about a pull going the opposite direction? Okay, a pull going the opposite direction. Okay, number one, if I just hit it and penetrate the backside, am I wrong by doing that? No, I can do that, can't I? Okay, I'm fine, I can do that. How about if, uh, if he blocks back and I just squeeze? Okay, I don't want to cross too early, right, until ball declares. Okay, ball declares, now I can make that... I can pass, how am I going to pass it when ball declares inside of me? Okay, bring my off hand over the top, right? If I rip, can I legitimately expect to get there? No, okay? So when ball declares inside, as he pulls, coach, you're pulling this time, coach is, blo uh, is, is blocking back on me. Okay, set hit, you're going, coach, because you're going to run off stage here. He's down in here. If I went backside, I'm fine. If I don't, I get stuck here, okay? Set, hit, boom, I get stuck, okay? 
I'm in position. My primary gap is right here. But as soon as ball declares inside of me, okay, it's run, run, run. Ball declares inside. I'm dropping my, my hand right over his elbow, okay? Is, can he hold me now? All right? I don't believe so, okay? Because I'm just now taking it right over here. The good ones are, will happen so quick that it's just right here and you won't even be able to see it, okay? It's happened so quick. You're just going to see that the guy's off the block, okay? I hope that's been uh, some help. All right, coaches, we'll let you go, and I'll get some other guys to get up here. Thank you. Um, again, it's real simple, and I know there's other reactionary blockers, you know, all kind of things. But I want to move down the line uh, quickly, <laughs> and then we'll move on. Uh, how do you play a difference between a defensive end technique, see that five technique that's listed there, and, um, and these shades? Not a whole lot when you're fighting a reach block and all that stuff, okay? But when flow goes away, this guy needs to be responsible for the wind back run, then the quarterback, then the reverse, okay? So remember that order, wind back run, quarterback reverse. If you play it any other way, you're screwed, okay? Just because the guy comes over and he runs flash motion, this guy doesn't need to be chasing the uh, reverse because the windback, they're going to dehydrate their running back, running so many windback runs on you, okay? So I'm going to squeeze back down, play that windback. Then the quarterback, then the reverse, okay, in that order. Um, a lot of times I've seen on tape a bunch of guys will be up the field, you know. He'll be as deep as the deepest and all that kind of stuff. Well, the windback run you've got no answer for, okay? You'll have no answer for in that. Uh, I remember watching a playoff game, the Miami Dolphins versus the Raiders, the year we won the Super Bowl, which is a zillion years ago in 2000. The, uh, Jason Taylor comes, they run that windback run, he drills it, no gain. Second play, they run, a, they run a bootleg, he sacks the quarterback. Third play, all right, they come back, they run the windback run off a of fake reverse action. Jason's making the play on the reverse. All right, too bad it was a windback run. He went for 58 yards, okay? 58 yards they ran it for, and all he did was take the ball back, started here, took the ball back here. Jason went and, and made the play on the, uh, on the reverse. Hell of a play, okay? Went for 58 yards on him. Make sure you're stopping him in that order. Anytime you have a blitz, it's windback, windback quarterback, reverse, okay? Anytime you're coming off an edge. Talk about uh, uh, what other thing does he have to, to uh, play, a defensive end? How do, what does he have to play? Well, he has to play the uh, pull by the guard, doesn't he? Okay? So, or a kick out by a fullback or, you know, somebody coming in here to block this guy, getting him out of that hole. We will never trade one for one. Okay? We'll always trade two for one, but never one for one. So what we try to do is, you know, like uh, you talk about spilling things, okay? Most guys, when they spill, they throw what? Their outside arm, okay? They throw their outside arm, they get underneath, and that's going to spill the thing. That's true, but you're traded one for one. What we try to do is, as I'm coming back inside, I'm now going to get vertical through the inside. Yes, if your ball carrier kept going inside, I'd make the tackle, okay? But we're trying to make that thing to uh, just back up just about a, a yard or so, if I can make him knock his ass back, that ball's going to have to bounce over the top of me. Okay, guys? So that's how we try to play it. Uh, we're getting north. We're going to get vertical through. After we spill, we're getting vertical through it and hopefully have to knock that thing back. Okay. Common things people do, and this sounds crazy. Uh, I'm going to go over it real, qu uh, real quick. Is... You want to get things on your terms, okay? The, if I'm a defensive player, I want to attack the blocks on my terms. And this could be a linebacker, could be anybody. Not on the offensive terms. In other words, I don't want you sit back and, and Paul knows who the force man is, okay? Whoever, they know who the force man is. Because now if I'm the force man, that tells me to do what? Contain the football, doesn't it? Okay, stay out here, you're containing the football. Yep, that's true. But what am I trading? 
I'm trading one for one. Okay? I don't want you to know what I'm doing. So if I end up attacking through the inside of that back when he thought I was forcing, what do you think that's going to do to their play? It's going to have to spill and get outside, right? It's going to have to bounce it outside. All right? And guess what? We'll have another force player then. All right? So we're just trying to get things on our turn, uh, on our terms. We're changing the math. Okay? We are going to change the math. Because if I can get a guy to, to take out two of yours, the math has been changed in our favor. Okay? So that's another thing we look, uh, we look to do. Any time, how about if you're playing a head-up position? If I'm playing a head-up position, all right, this was called uh, two-gap before, right? You know, he's two-gapping. That's not, that's not how we play it, okay? You can play an inside shade, you can play an outside shade, whatever. We are trying to get knock them back on your man, okay? So if we're head-up on a guy, we are trying to not win inside, to not win outside, but we're going to try to win through you. Okay? We are going to try to knock that guy back. We have an advantage. You know why we have an advantage? Because that offensive line is trying to cut off or he's trying to do something. Generally, if, and when they go, they automatically, most offensive linemen automatically have to bring their hands back, right? It doesn't time out if they don't. You know, they can't just fire out and then try to cut you off. Okay? So what we're trying to do is we'll try to gain an advantage, try to get our hands in your chest or get our hands inside of you to give us some advantage. Now here's one other tip that, that we'll do, and then we'll move on to some other things that we have. Okay? Yeah. 15 minutes. Okay. We're, like I said, we'll go real quick. Make sure when you're attacking that, the uh, blocker, and this is really any time. You know, people say, well, you know, get your, get your hat outside, get your whatever, hips outside, hat outside, do something, okay? Follow your eyes, okay? Follow your eyes, you'll still maintain power, okay? You have no power when, you, when your eyes stop. I'll give you an example. Ball's going this direction over here. How many times have you seen a guy, he's pressing here, he'll look back, what happens? He gets overtaken. Okay, because he's in good position, now he peaks. When he peaks, what happens to my feet? They stop. Okay, so I'm in here, oh shit, now I'm behind the guy. Okay, follow your eyes until you get knock them back on the guy. Okay, is it a reach block if I can put you in the backfield about two or three yards deep? It's not a reach. I don't care where his body ended up. If I can plant your ass about two or three yards deep in the backfield, there's no such thing as a reach. The linebacker's going to overplay you anyway. Okay? So again, I follow your eyes. If I'm going here, boom, follow my eyes. Okay? When do I know to, that I can look back? How about if he's three yards deep? Okay? Can I look back now? You see what I'm saying? I want to I make sure that I'm dominating the line of scrimmage. We're trying to dominate the line of scrimmage. If I'm on one man, I should win that. Okay? I should win that. Now, I know the o, that old player could be better than my ex, but if I'm playing technique, it's going to give me a chance. If I'll, if I'll follow my eyes, I'll have a chance to maintain physical position on, uh, on the uh, other blocker. Okay? I'll be a hell of a lot more powerful that way. All right, some things that I'm going to zip through because I want to get to some of this tape. Um, okay, there's some uh, two-gap stuff. Okay. All right. We talked about running pass rush games, okay? And traditionally, the man protection side, the zone, you know, or the slide protection side. Again, it's going to change on your, on your opponents. But if I'm doing this, notice where, like I put this tackle more head up, Okay. The real, the real concept is he'll attack this guy. He's trying to freeze that guard. He's trying to keep that guard as a short setter, okay, when we're running the, the, what we call a uh, inside game here, okay, a me, we put it. But the, he's going to go first. This guy's going second. By the way, Paul, we'll switch these up each week. But anyway, um, 
if, if he's going to run this game, he's going to start up the field. Now he's going to hit hard inside. This guy now is going to step to you, try to freeze your feet or uh, have the guard short set to get him on two different levels. That's all we're trying to do is get you on two different levels. If we can, we got a chance to get the pick and get the loop behind it. Okay? And again, I'm just throwing them out there just so you can see what we're trying to teach without going into it. You know, hey, would you love to come back here and ear hole this guard? Absolutely. The whole key, though, is that you're trying to get them on two different levels. Okay? Or you're, you're trying to get them back here offset to where I can create a, a, a pass where now I've got a pick here and he can't, he can't get over the top of me. How about if that was on a slide protection side? Is that worth a shit? No, okay? If, all games aren't near as good on the slide protection side, right? Because they're basically moving into a zone, okay? It's a man stunt going into a zone, you know, concept by the offensive line. So that's why, again, it's important for you to, to change your protections up. Okay, the U game's just the opposite, right? The tackle's going first, this end's going to go second. Again, that, that tackle's going up the field. Is he trying to beat the guard? No. What is he trying to do? He's trying to penetrate that gap and pick the tackle. Okay? So he's penetrating the gap, and now he's going to pick the tackle. He's trying to get him an ear hole on the inside of the uh, tackle and then be able to contain the quarterback. Okay? When run right, that guard hopefully now has to stay on him, right? If he has to stay on him, this has got a great chance of working. Who's going to come open if he has to stay on him? The end will, right? Okay? If he passes it, we're hoping that the guy picking now this tackle can now get up the field. Just common sense one-on-one football. Okay, what happens inside? Is this realistic to think that these guys most of the time will run a stunt? Three tech first, this nose second. Or in this case, the nose first and the tackle second. Not really. What do they do? They run a, what they call a read-tom game. Okay, this is anybody, football one-on-one. But they'll start up the field. Both guys will, will get up the field and penetrate. Who are they reading? They're reading the center. Okay? Whichever way that center works, if he works here, this, this tackle now becomes the looper, doesn't he? This guy becomes the penetrator. You can't run it the other way. Why would you run it the other way? Okay? Because basically what we're saying is, as this center comes out here, this is now what side of the protection? It's the zone side, right? This side's now the man side. What side do we want to attack on the passing game? Always the man side. So we're saying in theory that it's hard to be right if I'm an offensive lineman. This one's hard to be right on. Okay? So as we're both, we've got to sell it. We're both getting hard up the field. This one's kind of hard to, uh, hard to be right on. Okay? Now, is there some stunts or blitzes that we have that we may run this stunt and this stunt regardless of what they have? Absolutely. Okay, but if it's just a true pass rush stunt, both tackles are coming in, they're getting up the field, they're both key in that center. That center end up favoring uh, one side or the other, then we'll end up running the, uh, the Tom game. Okay, off that way. Any questions on that? I hope not. Yep. If he's falling back out? That, okay, if he's coming straight back, we'll keep, keep rushing the pass. Okay, in other words, we're both going to hit up the field, and we're keeping up the field. Until he declares, we're both trying to get up the field. Okay, guys? If he short sets, what's the play probably going to be? Probably a run, okay? Or something like that, a screen or a run, okay? But if he's given ground, he's given ground like this, both guys should still be up the field until ball declares, uh, until he eventually is going to declare one way or the other. What happens there? If we keep going hard up the field, we're trying to push that pocket in the quarterback's lap, okay? Now, I've seen this uh, run a lot of different ways. Sometimes it was run this way, both guys inside to push the pocket. The only thing I don't like about that is now the quarterback has an escape, has an escape angle to both B-gaps. He can go to both B-gaps, okay? Uh, let me see what else we got down here. Okay, that's that read Tom concept here. Okay, you'll see different things here. Uh, Three-man games, you, you've got to have some uh, way of, of talking about them. 
We just do this. It's a Ron right outside. Lawn is left outside. Rick right inside. Lynn is left inside. Okay? All that is, we're trying to attack the man protection side, only this time it's a three-man game instead of a two-man game. Okay? I'm not going to uh, get on with much more of that. I want to go see some, uh, some video where you guys can see uh, some of those run things that I'm talking about. Uh, let me go real quick over linebackers. Okay? In linebacker play, basically there's a way of, of uh, playing things. We call it, it's a, uh, it's a speed triangle where basically we'll key the fullback in I formation. That old saying, he's either going to lead or carry, right? Okay, and that's true. He'll either lead or carry. It's surprising how many times we'll get fullback belly. Okay? And I think one of the reasons is we got a lot of speed on defense, okay? But the fullback belly is still a good play. All right, still a good play. Who do you think runs it more than anybody? A certain team. Okay? Bengals, right? Ask Paul why he runs it. I don't know. But the guy will either lead or carry, okay? Lead or carry most of the time when he's in an eye, eye formation. Will they run plunge? In other words, with a fullback, I don't even know what you guys call it, will the fullback end up uh, going one direction and the ball going the other or zone? Absolutely. But now you don't have a lead blocker, okay? So what we'll try to do is we can get on a pointer system, which basically is I'm going to point to the fullback, Okay, that, that's going to be the guy that I'm stepping off of. I will have a point, if I'm an un uncovered, maybe I'm a 20 linebacker or a 40 linebacker, one of my pointers is going to be outside of the guy that I'm directly lined up on. Okay? The other pointer is going to be to the backside guard. Okay? And I've done it this way for a long time. If the fullback steps to the backside, my eyes initially should be going to who? They should be going to that guard or vision through the guard over there. And the reason I say that, if they're going to run a play back here, what's this guy going to do? He's going to have to pull, right? Okay, or something is coming back this way. Other than that, that's going to get me to play front or get me to play backside. Okay, if it comes directly to me, basically I'm saying to not get what. Don't get reached is basically what I'm saying that you got to do. Don't get reached. Okay, so if the, if the back comes to me, I'm basically saying don't get reached. Can he fall back inside? Absolutely. If ball declares back inside, he's got no different technique than the D lineman does. Okay, so it's just a, a real simple way. How about if it was paired tight ends? They want to pair the tight end over here. Basically, I'm already on my left step, aren't I? Okay, I'm basically already on my left pointer. So if I'm playing a backer back here, I'd have one through here, and I'd have one in my backside guard. Okay, it might not make sense, but all right, let's, let's move on. Let's watch the video, and we'll, we'll see. I only made like, uh, I just put like eight clips on. And uh, oh, one other technique I want to go over real quick. If it's a zone play, and the guard literally is flying away from you, okay, what's the lineman going to do? He's going to cut the, shit, the heck out of you, isn't he? So he's coming down, he's going to roll you up, and that guard's flying out of there. It's that wide Denver zone and all that kind of stuff, okay? Um, the main thing that I have to do as a D lineman is stay on my feet. We call it a big ball technique, okay? And the reason we call it a big ball technique is for us to practice it, we get that big, huge ball, and Gilman ball, since Gilman's here, all right? We take that big ball, and we'll literally throw it at our guy's legs. So... We'll simulate it where the lineman's flying out of there. I can't get to the front side number, okay? So I, I can't get to him. He's just, he's running out of there on me. Well, I know right now I better be able to protect my legs backside because it's going to happen. It's going to try to roll me up. If I continue to try to get penetration, what happens? They end up cutting the shit out of you, okay? And I can't tell you how many times I hear a coach always bitching about, well, they're cutting in practice. You guys can't cut in practice. Cut our ass in practice. That means my guy's playing with horse shit technique. Okay? So as soon as I see that thing go away and I can't get to that, uh, that inside, I'm going to now skate my hips back to the inside. Press my hips back to the inside. I'm going to try to block right now. I know you're coming here. If you're up, guess what? I'm already on my feet. I'm fine. But if you come back down and you cut my legs, 
That's why I'm trying to stay on my feet. Okay, and shuffle. Do I need to get penetration on that block? I got to do just the opposite. Okay, just the opposite. I always want to try to penetrate a double team, but when flow goes away from me, I've got to stay on my feet. That's priority number one. Okay, go down the line of scrimmage. Where's that ball designed to do? It's designed to roll back, isn't it? So I have to be on my feet to make this tackle as it comes back. Notice my shoulders are always square. Okay, my shoulders are always square. All right, Wid, we ready? Okay, where's the zapper to work this? Somebody. This one? Oh, shit. Okay, got to be a five bit of cap, but I got a D in audio visual, so this ought to be good. All right, and then reverse is right there. Okay. Hit play again and it'll, there you go. All right, so now, okay, it's play right here. Take a look at uh, Kelly. Okay, see how he's fighting the double team, this uh, little 97. Okay, so right here, watch him, how he's playing the double team. Punch, see how, it, how his hips are, boy, this, somebody who's got uh, better intelligence than I do, which is probably, not everybody stand up at once. All right, all right, well, fuck, here we go. All right, so we see, see how we're playing this double team. All right, this guy now, he's trying to get knock him back, right? Now, he should have shed. He walked off a block, which is horse shit, but he ended up making the tackle. Okay, don't be selfish. He should have picked the color off through his hole. All right, so hit this play button twice, right, Wid? Okay, there it goes. So he punches here. Now, he should have taken that blocker so his teammates could have made the tackle. All right. He was trying to make the Pro Bowl, it looks like. All right, take a look at Kelly. All right, he's playing the shade. Is that just a reach block? Basically, that's a reach block. That's going to free the linebacker up, right, because he took on both of them. Okay, so that frees the linebacker up. Again, these are just plays. All right, backside, he's playing thick, isn't he? All right, let's watch the backside. I'll get the hang of this thing here in about right when I leave. Okay, so he's playing thick through here. Not a lot letting the uh, jump through off on Ray. Okay. Any questions on, you, you'll see these. I'm just going to keep going and moving on. Okay, a linebacker will always have a get it, get it on his terms linebacker and a run and hit linebacker. Don't worry about the front. Okay, let's take a look at 92. You're going to see how to play the reach. Boom, see the punch? Okay, now... On this here, it's good to be three, whatever he is, okay? See how he took color through the hole? You'll all, you're never wrong by taking color through the hole. We said we'd trade, right? We'll never trade one for one. We will always trade two for one, never one for one, okay? So if you can pick off a guy coming through your hole, we'll do that. That's two, two for one, right? We'll take that trade. We're changing the math on him. Okay, Sug stepping inside. He gets to make another tackle. Okay. Again, I got some bad ones. I put this in for Paul. Okay. I told you they like that damn full bank. All right. It's still always get our guys best playing football. He's going to check out our wineback player, isn't he? Okay. That's why he put this play in. He's checking out the wineback. Hey, let him let him go take this pitch. Well, if he does, that damn wineback's out the gate on us. Okay. All right, let's take a look at uh, some techniques. Now, let's see how thick he plays. See how thick he is through the inside. Okay, you see how thick he is through the inside here. When he, when he tries to come back and make that tackle. Again, that's a, that's a big son of a bitch, but it doesn't matter. It's his technique we're looking at. Kelly's playing the reach, and he's trying to fall off it. Okay, the ball declared inside of him, fall off. Okay, I put some, mainly some 4-3 things on here for you front-wise. Okay, here's a good look at, at the uh, jump through, okay, or the scoop block by Nada. Okay, 92. See how thick he is? Could have been better even. Okay, you got to stay square. They're going to get movement on you. Okay, watch Kelly on the fall back here. Watch the, this, the nose tackle. He's playing a reach block and watch him fall back inside. See how he brought that offhand back to the inside. If he kept continuing, all right, up the field, 
All right, he's not going to be a factor there. Don't ever assume that you can make a tackle one on one on a back. Okay, I love always that. Well, we'll know we're going to play a gap defense because we'll know whose fault it is. Well, they'll have a new. You'll, you'll feel great as a, as a coach saying, "Well, that was so and so's gap." Well, guess what? He just ran the ball up your ass. So, get ready to at, at least be able to fall back in and have some different techniques here. Okay. All right, now these are some, uh, I've got, okay, now I've got, I put some, a bad one in here by Kelly, okay, he's playing a double team, okay, he's playing a double team, whoop, okay, why is this a bad one? He got turned, okay, he got turned bigger than shit, okay, he got turned, poor technique, all right, it's excellent on the, on the back side, watch 92, Okay, it's excellent on the backside. Look how thick he is through the inside. Now, those two guys are 400 pounders apiece going at it. Okay, but you see how thick he is. He's not letting the, the other big guy come off in the backer. Okay, that's good. And these two Arizona Staters going at it. Yeah, I had to pick that one on Levi. All right, redu here's a reduced front. A, a, Put them on. All you do is pass anymore, Paul. I don't know what the fuck. All right, but anyway. Okay, now I put one on, as you're going to see, the uh, primarily I, I put these on for tackle looks. Okay? Now, this is a little technique that we'll use. It's called a half technique. In other words, what we're doing is we're showing a shade here, and this is a little trick to the trade. Okay? They're running a bunch of lead opens on us, all right, with this front. And we're, we're making this guy the postman all the time and this guy the drive man. If you'll make a half call, is what we call it, he'll end up actually trying to step to this guy to make him the drive man, or excuse me, make him the postman and this guy the drive man. Okay? It's a little technique. It, it's gonna, it, it looks real easy, easy but it's uh, difficult for the old line because now the guy's got to try to pass it. Okay? And it's just a little technique here that we'll... Uh, That's just a, a little change up. Again, I put this in. Look at the back side. Okay, look at the back side tackle. See how thick he is. Okay, you see how thick he is. Okay, we're playing Pittsburgh. Nobody likes Pittsburgh. All right, again, I want to, just want to see how thick. You're trying to get knock him back here. Okay, you're trying to get knock him back here. Okay, on the back side, so he's thick, isn't he? Okay, he's thick through there. Okay, he may half this. Let's see if he plays it straight up. Okay, he halved it, didn't he? See a little technique? So he halves it. He's stepping into this guy. The other guy's real thick. Okay, we'll watch, I think, a couple more and that's it. Again, it's not that we're just going to put good ones on here. I think when you average 2.6 a carry against you, you'll probably put a bunch of them on. All right? But you see the double team. See how our guy stays on this double team. Watch him here on the double. Okay? So it's easy to play a uh, linebacker behind him, right? Okay? See how thick this other, gar uh, this other tackle is. Okay? And the linebacker a lot of times is undrafted, and that's a good thing. Or is a uh, unblocked. All right, fellas. All right.